having me. Um, it's been a while since I made a presentation actually. So uh, I might be a little rusty, but uh, here we go. So basically I'm going to um, kind of show you slides of uh, Iguana Land. Uh, and then at the end, uh, you guys could ask me questions and I could also talk about, you know, I could go into you know, a lot of details about how I got here, uh, but that's something that I want you guys to ask, okay? I, I, you know, uh, I have um, actually had a pretty full life and my daughter actually is doing a um, uh, documentary on my life actually. So if you really want to, you know, uh, you know, learn more about me, you just have to wait for the movie. Anyway, here we go. Um, that's basically the front of the, um, the facility. Uh, I bought this uh, land and it, actually it was a uh, plant nursery when I bought it in 2007. Uh, so I've been there for 15 years. Um, and that's part of it. As you could, if you come into the um, uh, the parking lot, that's what you see. And that's the entrance uh, to the uh, gift shop. And as you come exit the gift shop, uh, that's the kind of like the eating area. Um, and it's about, I think it's about 6,000 square feet barn. And this is my engine wing wall. Um, um, I, I want to eventually turn this wall into um, domestic abuse issues, but that's something that I really care about. Um, so, and there's another uh, portion of my um, wall that a lot of people, you know, stand in front of and take photos, and that's exactly why I had these uh, walls made. And that is something that we're working on right now. This area would have eight um, rock work enclosures like this, and it will have eight species of rock iguanas, actually, Cyclorus. And that would be all the species that's available to us in the U.S. Most zoos probably only have about one or two species, and we're going to try to have all eight. So, right now we have seven. Only one that I don't have is the Jamaican iguana. So, so anyway, this is one of the, uh, the, the cages, the line of cages that we have built. Um, I decided that, uh, uh, well, before I decided to uh, turn it into a public place, um, that was about three years ago when I decided to turn this private uh, facility into a public place. And when I did that, I decided that I wanted to build things that would last at least 50 years, 50 to 100 years. So basically all the cages I'm building now are uh, brick, brick uh, uh, block, and aluminum, and cement. That's the uh, other side of the wall, uh, the, the cages. Um, I believe we have an artist here who did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's you. Yeah, he painted that for me. Thank you. Uh, this is part of my breeding area. Um, this is off limits to public. My breeding area cages are pretty simple. It's not, it's not built with, you know, with the block or anything like that. They're basically tin. Uh, the reason why I built them this way was uh, when I first started, um, my mission was to uh, donate as much, much money uh, funding as possible to conservation work. So, um, and um, I decided that I couldn't really skimp on paying employees. I couldn't really skimp on um, you know, feeding the animals. And one of the things that I can skimp is uh, building cages, right? So basically, if I built them like I'm building the zoo now, they would be 10 times more. Mm -hmm. So I use inexpensive material here because animals don't care how they look, right? They just want roomy area. So this is my way of um, having enough money left over so I could do conservation work. Matter of fact, last um, 15 years, we donated about $600,000 of conservation work what? from this facility. So, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of zoos recognize us, although we're individuals. That's why we get animals like Anagara Iguana, for instance. 
And this, you can see, this is one of the enclosures for uh, my breeding, rocky one out of breeding enclosure. You can see, um, you know, in the middle of that block is heated house. All my houses are heated. Uh, this is 20 feet by 10 feet. Um, and then you can see in the back, uh, you can see some of uh, the blocks. That's where the, uh, the, uh, the uh, female lay their eggs. Okay, so uh, let's, for rhino iguana, they typically lay in um, June, July. So like in May, I fill that out uh, those uh, two pits. You can see one up front and you see one in the back. And you usually have one male and two females. And they usually, you know, they each lay in their spot. And also the, um, the house in the middle is a very good visual barrier between them because they do tend to fight after they lay eggs. So you can see the front and the back of the lay area. And basically about a month before uh, I know they're laying, we fill that with sand. Why don't you leave the sand? I'm sorry? Well, why, do, why do you take the sand out or is it the sand? Oh, they, they kick it out. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually, by the time they're done, half of the sand is gone. <laughs> yeah. so we have to replace it, yeah. They did, yeah. Okay, so this part of our um, uh, the facility, the zoo, the one on the left, left side is, I originally built those for large um, snakes, like 20 foot snakes, but unfortunately FWC isn't giving us permit for those, so right now we have monitors in those. I think eventually as we become a, like a ZAA a, a, a affiliate and, and uh, do more I should say public work, I think they will give us a permit for those giant snakes, but right now, I really don't even want to ask them right now because I got in trouble just with Iguana. Yeah. It's kind of sad, but um, I got charged for having Iguanas. Um, and they won't even... Did they confiscate all your animals? Yeah, they took, um, they charged me for having 89 Iguanas left. And, um, yeah, and, and I have to go to court for that job. And I think they, I think they picked me as someone they wanted to... Make uh, an example. Yeah, make an example, because none of the other breeders have gotten tickets, or matter of fact, some of them still have them. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just uh, for them to make, make a, uh, took the largest breeder of iguanas and tried to make a big figure out of it. So they send it out to all the newspapers and stuff like right, that. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, um, all, all I know at this point is everyone else got 30 day extension and I'm the one who didn't get 30 day extension. Um, they charged me for having 89 animals. Matter of fact, they were gonna take all of them and kill them, but we were able to convince the, uh, the officers. Officers were on our side. They didn't want us to take the animal. It was the people in Tallahassee. Um, anyway, so um, I had to actually make a deal with them because week after they came, I had somebody coming from Texas to take the 54 he wanted. And so I had, literally had to bag them to keep them for one week so that my friend of mine could take 54 iguanas. Right. So eventually they were, I mean, these officers had to, have, had to convince the people in Tallahassee even to do that. Did they convince them? Was she able to? Did, okay. did, did they, did they? Yeah, they, they allowed them to come, come take them okay. a week later. So basically they took, I believe, 36 animals and killed them. The thing is, I said it was, about 600 iguanas. I'm the largest iguana breeder in the nation. And, you know, for me to be able to get rid of all of them in three months, yeah, it was we, we just couldn't do it. And we did our best. We got rid of everything except for 30 cents. And if they give, gave us probably another two weeks, or even that one month extension they gave it to everyone else, we'd have been able to get rid of it. I mean, my options were very, you know, um, fill out the cages for them which we couldn't do because we're, um, we're 
bound by the ADA rule, which is, you know, we can't build them the wall that high. Right. And they'll be against the federal law. Right. right? So they passed all these laws that could even uh, SX, SX, um, uh, 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 a facility like that, we couldn't. We have, we, we, you know, I, ADA law is very important. That's a federal law, so that, we have that, to buy that's one. That's right. Yeah. And they, you can't build a brick wall four foot high and, and be able to do that. So, uh, and, and the other way was to uh, keep them more inside. And we actually did that. Um, but apparently, uh, the, there was other rules like the double door, and you have to put signs that, and then you, I mean, uh, threaten speech of uh, the, what, what's the, what's the word? Prohibited. Yeah, prohibited species. And the thing is, we had to, and most places they gave them 30 days to, to do the double door and all this stuff. They didn't give it to us. They just ticketed it us right there. So, Obviously, we're going to fight this in court, but, you know, it's just going to cost us more. It's a waste of time. Right. Have you been vocal with, like, the media about it and try to get media attention? I'm sorry? Have you been vocal with the media about it to get media attention? Well, okay, so when... Because you are doing so much conservation. Right. Media... Um, okay, so media reached out to me when that happened, but I didn't wanted to say anything because I had these 54 animals that that they could take. Right. So if I went to the media and told them my side, they might have took 54 animals. Right. And so I just didn't say anything. And I knew um, I knew they were going to say a lot of bad things about me, but I didn't have any rebuttal because I I didn't want them to take my animals. And I, so I chose that route. It's better to just leave it alone. Right, exactly. I, I just shut up and let them do what they have to do as long as they let me keep those 54 animals for another week so that a friend of mine could save them. And that's what I did. So I, I didn't go to the media at all. They reached out to me and, and I, just, I, I just felt like I shouldn't do it. But, you know, 54 animals, you know, they could just take those if they were mad at me. Right. But I mean, even now, like, if this, you know, after the fact of that story in general, I mean, it just feels like people would be very sympathetic to you and all the work that you do. Yeah, I mean, it's something that, you know, the media doesn't really care about that. Right. Yeah, and they just want, sens you know, sensationalism. And this is really, Since yeah, they don't really care about that. So, right. Okay. Yeah, I wish they would tell my story, but... Um, yeah. They were, yeah. But you know, some people will take that, and you know, literally, actually, the newspaper article says that, um, like, I could go to jail and stuff. <laughs> they would pull it up. One of the TV stations had um, rock iguana, uh, and it got iguana. There's only 12 in the in the world. They had they put that at, at the green iguana. Um, this it was just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, they couldn't even find green iguana to put them in new, new, yeah, new size. Yeah, it was, it was kind of ridiculous, but I couldn't do anything, but I didn't want it to visit. This is just another area. This area in the, in the back, I'm, I'm putting in more uh, tur uh, turtle and tortoise enclosures. This is more like a, kind of like a, well, I'm making it into a park. I'm going to name it after my daughter, Victoria Park. The quarter pond. That's a quarter of a million dollar quarter pond. By the way, two hundred fifty thousand dollars it cost me to build that koi pond. And before paying for the koi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a part of my colonial center. We have the largest turtle center in the world right now. That walk is about 160 feet. Wow. And again, you can see everything's uh, built with black and aluminum. Um, each one of these are 10 feet by 16 feet. Wow. They all have um, their own um, uh, uh, pump and waterfall. Wow. That's another view. There's one of them right there. Uh, you can see um, basically 
the top portion is where the water gets pumped out and and then it flows into the little pond there. Some of them are about three feet deep. Some of them are just a stream. And this one is the largest one that I have. Uh, I have nine North American wood turtles in here. And this is part of my uh, total stand, land turtles. One on the left, uh, that's a little house, that's heated house. You can see, can you ID that animal? <laughs> uh, that's a Frankie monitor. I think there's only about four Jews in the U.S. that has this species. What is it called? Parenti? Yeah. Varenis gigantic. Um, it's the largest, um, largest monitor in Australia. And uh, I believe there's only four Jews in the U.S. that has it. Uh, Dallas Zoo gifted us two. And matter of fact, probably the rarest monitor in the U.S. right now that probably every zoo has Komodo dragons, but only four zoo has you know, variety of uh, days. So, we're really honored to have these uh, animals. That's the uh, Parenti. Yeah. One of my favorite monitors. And now we're going to some of my rock one, I think. Uh, this one, I believe it's a recorder. I can't really see. I believe that's a recorder. It's a pro recorder. Comes from um, uh, Hispaniola. That enclosure is about $20,000. You can see all the rock work and cement. And that, uh, the log is built. Uh, with cement also. That's not a real lot. No, that's actually cement. Wow. That's me when I was one of my babies. This is Gus. He's uh, 36 years old. I think. Wow. He lived about 60 years. When I uh, decided to work with Rocky One in 2007 and 2008, uh, there was only about a handful of breeders back then. Um, and the funny thing is, so when I decide to do something, I kind of do it in a big way. Um, so I, I, for two years, I bought every rock iguana that was advertised on kingsnake.com. So, so there was all kind of rumor about me, uh, you know, trying to crash the market. The, the rock iguana is going to be like $50 animal, like $25 animal. Uh, guess what the price is now? It's 400 bucks, right? So my mission, my idea was to make them more popular, right? And and that's what I've done actually. Uh, probably about I say at least 50% of all the rock iguanas that produce in the U.S. come from my system. So my goal was to make them more, um, I don't know, uh, make them more popular. Tell people that they make great pets, right? Back then nobody really knew about rock. So I think I had some. Um, you know, um, effect on the these guys becoming more popular. So my idea was to, uh, to breed them, make them popular, uh, and, and have, you know, get them into these uh, people who really care about them. Because, you know, people buy 400 animals, they really do care about them, you know. They, they, they do tend to buy the UV light and stuff like that. And then take the profit and give it to the conservation work. Uh, this is one of my green uh, came with really one on the lower side. This is hybrid, but you can see it's pretty close to pure. Right? So my idea with, with the hybrid is, okay, so you take the lower side pure one, you can't sell them over the state line, right? So they, you can't sell them as fast. Anyway, so my idea is to take this um, hybrid that I, I purchased at Baby and raise them up and every. Every breeding season, I, I, I take the best baby and the bluest baby and try to make them uh, as blue as the real ones. So now I have animals that look like pure ones that I could actually sell. Uh, this is one of my camel lizards. This uh, species mostly eats uh, snail in the wild. You can see how the jaw tells you that it, it, it's, you know, it's very powerful, they could crush a snail. Yeah. That's one of my um, 
uh, Joanne Torres, Adawa Torres. This family came from California. One of the things that, that, that I did that was real smart, I think, um, few things that I, I did smart. Uh, I, the, the guano land is not commercial. And I, I, I was able to zone it agriculture. Um, one of the reasons why I have the largest Chelonia Center is turtle stock pipe. And it's aquaculture. All right, so, so I convinced my county zoning, um, uh, zoning actually person, come visit our facility, and I show them I'm winning all these aquatic turtles, and I need you guys to, um, you know, zone it, we zone it from commercial to agriculture, right, right. and and she actually did that. Oh, so, so now we're agriculture. Um, before that. Yeah, before that, I had a real hard time building. Every, basically the county came in and put red stickers all over the place and told us stop, to stop building. Okay, so um, they had no uh, zoning code for doing something like this. Yeah. So when I was building like enclosures with blocks that's only about 32 inches high, they didn't have that in the, in the zoning. So they, only thing they could do is, it had to be the same code as when I'm building a 10 foot house. So it was getting kind of ridiculous. So, so I was, I didn't know what to do. And, and one night, like three o'clock in the morning, it, it came to me, like literally, okay, I gotta, you know, become agriculture, because when you become agriculture, they leave you alone. Right. You want to land probably wouldn't have existed because I mean I don't want to spend 20 minutes. I mean five minutes okay, but that's, that's a little too much. Actually, my budget was two million, and because of the COVID, it went up to five. Yeah. Wow. That's so. Actually, this was one of the animals that lived at my house. I used to eat popcorn with him on watching TV. <laughs> uh, this, this is one that I fell in love with, and that's when I decided to um, do more, find out more about them, and I felt uh, that they needed help in the wild. So um, my, my ideas, you know, kicked in, and I decided, okay, I'm going to concentrate on these genus, and I'm going to check them if they're popular. And I know they need help in the wild, so I'm going to take the profit from that and help them in the wild. So, and that, I've been doing that for about 15 years. That's a pain of river pe terrapin. Uh, this is one of the endangered species. That's, uh, again, cranky moat monitor. That's uh, some of my wood turtles. My koi pond. <laughs> and that's my grandpa. Do you have any, like, will you have your mastics, or will you have any chop ballas, or will you have any type of those? Yeah, okay, so your mastics, I used to breed them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you could only do it indoors, obviously, because of the moon, right? And most of the in, uh, enclosures that I'm, I'm building now are outdoor. Right. Uh, remember that little section that I'm going to build the indoor yeah. enclosure? They're going to probably go in there. Okay. Um, having said that, I'm looking for chagawalas right now because the area, the, the enclosure that I had uh, earlier when, the, uh, the cranky monitor in, yeah. I just moved them out. Mm -hmm. And that enclosure is 13 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet. Okay. And it's very hot and it's fairly dry. Yeah. So I'm looking for chakawalas right now. It would be perfect for that in there. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to do a mixed um, uh, display of, with chakawala and um, um, uh, 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 the desert one. Oh, yeah. cool. So that will be great. Yeah. Uh, your map is, I'm going to have to wait until I go. But I used to be. you got to remember that a lot of these animals, they have. Um, you know, I disagree with a lot of methods and a lot of things that other people are telling me. Like, for instance, uh, rocket ones. They never see 50 degrees in, the, in their island. 
right? I mean, they really should probably 60. But they have that tolerance in their genetics, right? So, and I've learned that um, they could take 50 degrees without any problem. So, the thing that I do now is I turn the heat on when it's 50 or below. But in Florida, I won't do that in California because in California in the winter time, even the day is pretty cool. Here in Florida, the day is pretty warm in the winter time. So they get enough sun. Get so for adults, um, all my iguanas, they to, I turn on the heater at 50 degrees. A lot of experts disagree with me, but I've been doing it for 15 years. So. Yeah. Do you chase them and make them go inside their box? No, the, um, the rock iguanas are very smart. They, they just go in. Um, iguanas, green iguanas are fairly dumb. So a lot of times we have to literally grab them and put them in the chair. Where do you get the funding? The funding? Where do you get the funding for the the money. You don't get any donations or anything? Well, I get donations animals. No, I don't get any. Matter of fact, I give money. You do give money, so. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I gave you a ton of dollars. from the breeding? From breeding. When you breed the animals and you sell them. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Okay, so. When I breed animals, I sell the babies. And that's basically, actually. Um, that helped break even because I'm giving money away. Whatever it's not, I give it to conservation work or like U.S. and stuff like that. So um, the breeding part is making money, all right. So it, it, that's not a problem. The problem is I'm building the zoo. <laughs> that takes a lot of money. And so, so basically, in addition to taking care of all the animals. So obviously, really important is going to cover when I'm doing right now. So the other part. You know, why do you give it away? I'm sorry? Why do you donate it? Why do you give it away? Uh, what do you mean? Why do I give it away? You said you donate it to different organizations? Yeah. Why don't you keep it in the end? I'm in the I have that money. Oh, you have that money. You know, I mean, my dad taught me, uh, told me to divide my life into three stages. Um, and I figure I'm going to live to 90, so it'll be 30, 60, and 90. <laughs> so he told me the first, third, you're going to stay humble and learn as much as you can. Learn, learn, learn. And said, so, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so, and then he said the second phase, earn as much as you can. Because you can't live without money. <laughs> so earn as much as you can. So I say, so learn, earn, and what's the third thing? Instead, give it all. <laughs> so yeah. So that, that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Awesome.